Hello, Igniters. Uh, this is Kinjal. I work at Bloomberg as a senior software engineer in AIM. So AIM is essentially an asset investment and manager platform. Uh, it's a, it's a buy sell platform which helps various institutional clients manage their trading workflows. So my team here at Bloomberg provides a solution to the portfolio managers of those buy side companies uh, who are looking to gain the maximized returns. So we have built an application to provide them the data generated from the trading workflows. As part of the application implementation, we have used the Apache Ignite, especially the Apache Ignite SQL engine to uh, store the persistent data in a persistent form. And today I'm going to explain how we got data out of Ignite that got stored as a real-time data in the Ignite across various categories. Let's start with the presentation then. Okay, so this is portfolio management. I wanted to give a bit of context, like how they do and what their responsibilities are. So portfolio managers at asset investment firms, especially the buy side firms, look to invest clients' money. So buy side firms are the firms uh, that purchase the investment securities. And uh, these firms include like mutual funds, pension funds, hedge funds, or any other institutional firms. Okay. Their approach to managing the funds varies depending on the client's risk appetite, bidding benchmarks, ta generating target returns, etc. Okay, what that means. So bidding benchmarks means uh, they can compare their managed accounts investment or their managed accounts portfolio with the global index like S&P 500 Global or Dow and Jones index. Uh, additionally, they look to maximize the return on the investments by means of timely rebalancing the portfolio, comparing the current investment with the index benchmarks, etc. Fine. Okay. So what this means basically is that uh, let's say if they predict that IT sector is not going to do well uh, in the next quarter, then they take out some of the equities out of the platform or they take out some of the equities from their managed accounts and may assign those securities or may assign those funds in uh, some other instruments or in the different sector like automobile. Okay, so that's what uh, they do in terms of the timely rebalancing the portfolio. Okay, what are their needs? And that's why we have built an application. So data availability and consistency because portfolio managers of a uh, large institutional firm, large buy side firm work on uh, work globally. They do sit on various geographies. So the data should be available to them if they check it from any location. If they uh, log into the portal and uh, see the data, it should be available 24 by 7. Data should be consistent enough. They do, see, uh, they do see data for various number of columns, usually the 50 or 100 odd columns. So if they want the specific updates or if they want the lively updates on a couple of fields or many more fields, then they do subscribe on those fields and backend application will continuously provide those updates as and when the data changes on those fields. Okay, data should be valid. It shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't put in any invalid data set and display to the application interface. So that's also the crucial need. Data must persist in a transactional form in the data store. Uh, data should be uh, analyzed across the firm's accounts. So the portfolio managers who manage more than one firm's accounts, they should be able to analyze the data for their own managed accounts as well as the managed accounts. They are not, uh, they are not owning, but they can look through like how that specific portfolio is doing in order to help them take certain decisions. Okay. Okay. So here uh, I have depicted the prior architecture, what we had used and we have, we had actually experienced a few drawbacks. That's why we came up with uh, the Ignite to uh, be as a persistent store. So let me go through this uh, architecture. So we have the backend application that is in memory cache. Okay. And that in memory cache or rather say backend application would get data from the various upstream source servers. So the upstream source servers actually would provide data to the backend application and that those data sets would consist of the uh, position, securities, prices and everything uh, that uh, uh, account has invested for or that accounts portfolio manages for. So that is fed to the backend application through, uh, through a queue that can be Apache Kafka or any uh, or any decent, uh, 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 decent, decent queue like uh, RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ or anything like that. Okay. 
so this is the application interface which portfolio managers uses so whenever there is a need to uh, to see the data they actually makes a request to data enrichment layer which resolves certain number of fields and makes various api calls before reaching to backend application then it provides certain inputs to backend application based on which the backend application actually from its in memory cache provide the data back to the application interface so that's how the data flow happens from the backend application to application interface okay so this makes the subscription request for an account group or form fine what are the drawbacks of this architecture so it has the higher memory footprint okay because uh, suppose one backend application instance takes 15 to 20 gigs of memory and that really takes on moderate number of uh, on moderate data set basically i'm not talking about the huge data set but moderate data set takes 15 to 20 gigs of data okay so if we have to scale this application let's say if we have to run two or three instances of the same backend application then we may have to uh we may have to allocate some more number of memory or it it will actually have a higher footprint 2x or 3x times uh proportionally to a number of instances we are running so it has the complexity to scale then data could be unavailable upon application restart or cache refresh okay that means this is in memory cache data is not persisted on disk that means if backend application goes down or crashes then whatever data is fed through the queue needs to be built up again or needs to be generated again okay so and it takes in order to generate 15 or 20 gigs of data it takes few minutes uh, suppose 20 25 minutes so by that time uh, when backend application is building its in memory cache the data may not be available to the application interface okay so this is considered a downtime not a server downtime but a data downtime where the data is not available so application inter application interface would see nothing on its display and the portfolio managers or the users would think that uh, something wrong is going on and it's it's not available okay so that's the biggest drawback we experienced and there is no mechanism to recover the state from failure okay and that's obvious because we have in memory store so it has to be built from the scratch when backend application goes down or it has to come up uh, quickly from from the restart or at the start of the day okay okay what made us to choose apache ignite first of all so it beats the typical in memory cache in terms of the data persistence then it has the low memory footprint when used as a secondary cache why low memory footprint because apache ignite actually has the ability to store data in a hybrid mode when I say hybrid mode, it means it will store data on disk as well as off if memory. Okay. And on off if memory, we can assign a minimal memory of that where it can store most of the data, like 90% actually stores all the data on disk memory, but we can actually uh, onboard 20 or 20, 10 or 20% of the data to off if memory. So that's called the low memory footprint. Then it has the ability to store transactional data and maintain relationships across persisted entities. Okay, so that is the first and foremost needs. Like we actually needed to store data on various categories, and we needed to make joins on uh, different entities. So, like the way we maintain the relationships in the SQL database, we wanted to uh, achieve the same behavior while using Ignite. So. We are using the transactional ability of the Apache Ignite and maintain the relationships of them. Then data allocation actually happens in an isolated physical memory region separate from the main process memory. Okay, what that means. When Apache Ignite runs as an application process, okay, it doesn't share its memory with the application process memory like JVM. Okay, but rather stores the memory or rather stores the data on a separate region uh, called the OFIP memory and data is stored in a data region form so we can configure different data regions i will come to that point in a bit okay uh, continuing from the previous slide it improves the application performance by avoiding the gc poses in application memory that means uh, if our application is holding or is doing a lot of stuff then storing data into the ignite it actually avoids the gc poses and it actually uh, it actually uh, runs the application in a more efficient manner by doing or by running the GC poses in a separate OFIP memory. Okay, it also has the ability to recover the persisted state from 
WAL logs. So that means it maintains a write ahead log from which we can recover the persisted state. For every create, delete, and the update operation, it maintains that in a log file so that it can quickly recover from its uh, from, from the state. Okay, it achieves the parallelization by querying the data on separate threads across the server nodes in a cluster. So Ap Apache Ignite actually comes with uh, the various thread pools like data streamer pools, uh, public thread pools, query thread pools, and uh, a couple of more thread pools. Okay, so we can leverage that and we can achieve the parallelization by querying the data on separate threads. Okay, then it has the various configuration options to define the data regions. Uh, it also has uh, the ability to configure, uh, I mean, the Apache Ignite has uh, the standard APIs to configure the data region which are used most frequently. So here is the graphical representation of Apache Ignite memory architecture like uh, the, uh, these are the different server nodes, server node 1, 2, and 3, maybe, if it forms an Ignite cluster. Then it stores data uh, onto uh, the physical memory, that is, the on disk memory. Uh, it maintains the full transaction, fully transaction of the write-ahead logs. Then uh, it has the memory-centric storage, or it then uh, transfer the data back to off -heap memory. Okay, it removes the noticeable GC poses, and that's the key advantage we are getting here. It doesn't share the GC pose with the application application uh, application GC pose. So both GC poses are running in a separate memory, and that's why we notice a significant improvement in the performance. Right. Okay, this is our evolved architecture uh, from the uh, prior architecture. Okay, what do I mean by that? So every component remains as it is. The only thing we are adding here is the secondary application, and that's where we have introduced the Apache Ignite here. Okay, so Ignite process starts up inside the application process. So rather than running the Ignite as a standalone process, we actually run Ignite in a secondary application, and we have uh, the various data processors to process the data and store it into the Ignite. Okay, so we actually massage the data by means of the data processors running inside the secondary application. So this is called the secondary application, the whole component. And Apache Ignite comes up along with the process of the secondary application. So it keeps most of the data on disk and the smaller portion of it on off heap memory. Okay, that's the biggest advantage we are getting due to the memory constraints we have and we have experienced while our while running our application with the prior architecture. Okay. Now, uh, how, how does that work? Let's let's uh, go through that. So this is an application interface, the same application interface which talks to this backend application via data enrichment layer and it asks for the data. So whenever the backend application is not available, then application interface would see nothing as I mentioned earlier, right? Because in-memory cache is still being built, so it can't serve the partial data. So rather, what we had come up with, we have built a secondary application and as and when there is an update to the backend application, it provides a live updates to the secondary application and via data processor, it gets stored into Ignite. Okay, so when this Ignite can be used, okay, so when this in-memory cache is not available or uh, when there is or when the data is vanished from the in-memory cache for whatsoever reason, okay, so now uh, now, if application interface asks for the data to the backend application, the backend application sees that no data is available in its in-memory cache, and then it would reach to Ignite. Okay, Ignite serves the data when this is not available, when in-memory cache is not ready. Okay, so this is the advantage, the data availability we have ensured here. So it achieves data availability, it helps normalize the data, it retrieves data faster using threaded SQL queries. Okay, and there are many more advantages, we will talk about it later. So this is our evolved architecture. Fine. Now, how Apache Ignite SQL engine fits our needs? Okay, so basically, the first of all, Ignite is based on a SQL engine framework, and that is built on top of H2. So H2, as uh, most of you uh, might be knowing, that is an it's an ideal in-memory data storage. It's an ideal in-memory relational data store. Okay, but this is a typically a one version older older thing like. The latest Ignite doesn't use the H2 based SQL engine framework, it uses something else. Let's not talk about that for now. It uses an underlying cache mechanism. 
data is stored in a normalized form then it has various apis to define uh, the various cache configurations according to our needs it has the room for defining cache groups that consist of one or more caches okay what does that mean let's say we have five to six different types of cache okay and out of that two or three caches are most frequently accessed by the client okay so we can actually group them we can actually group those two or three most frequently caches we can assign them in a separate data region and that data region can be configured with a slightly higher memory footprint than other data regions okay so what advantage would we get here that like we will get a significant amount of data stored onto the data region with a slightly higher memory footprint and it doesn't have to go to on disk every time whenever there is a demand for the data okay so that, that that's what i mean that it has the ability to define the cache groups that consist of one or more caches so that we can accommodate them in a data store uh, in a data region it keeps data partitioned in a cluster of participant nodes and that's the crucial piece like because it it's a distributed cache right it keeps our data distributed so if we have let's say 15 gigs of data so not all of our data will sit onto one node but if we have if we have used the, uh, three nodes or if we have formed a cluster with three ignite nodes then it will accommodate five gigs of data on each okay so it will ensure the uniformity of the data and it will uh, rebalance the data onto the ignite nodes it's not the application's implementation but ignite handles it internally uh, quite uh, in a quite efficient manner okay so that it uses the data partition it keeps data partition ignite can also calculate statistics by request and use it to build an optimal sql query plan so this helped us a lot that periodically we actually uh, print the logs by uh, by the ignite apis to print the statistics or calculate the statistics and then we built an optimal sql query plan so we had several sql queries which we make to the app uh, which you make to the sql uh, which you make to the uh, to the sql engine of the ignite and it helps us to build an optimal sql query plan so that we have we can change and we can monitor the behavior of how our sql query takes or how how long does it take to get data out of the ignite okay so these are all our uh, needs this is underlying ignite storage so this is based on our application is that how we store data into ignite okay so let me first go through this diagram this is ignite and this is application uh, this is the application where uh, as part of it the ignite is running and it stores the data so there are two two things like t data and t minus one data okay so t is the current data and t minus one is one version older data okay when application is uh, started or, or when application is running it gets continuous updates from the backend application okay and if those updates are for the current version those updates or those new data will be written as a t data onto the ignite okay then what is t minus one why there is a need to persist t minus one data okay imagine a situation where uh, we have let's say 10 gigs of data okay where we have to store where ignite has to store 10 gigs of data but it has only received two or three gigs of data so far okay and when application interface or when client asks for the data it can't serve the partial data from the from the from its storage right otherwise it would maintain a kind of inconsistency and it would see uh, and the clients may experience uh, a client may experience the weird things on the on the display and they would think that data is not consistent or data is not correct right so while the time the t data is being built or t data is being stored into the ignite we maintain a t minus one data that has the exact copy of the whole snapshot of the previous version so here uh, the only thing is we are serving a one version older data but that doesn't mean we are serving the inconsistent data okay the data might be data might be stale but that's okay okay it might be 10 or 15 minutes of delay but that is uh, that is our application is that uh, if even though uh, we claim it to be real time but still in this case it is acceptable that t minus one data should be there because portfolio managers would use this data to take certain decisions okay and data might not be drastically changing here in terms of the numbers okay uh, the one one caveat though here is that it 
increases the temporary disk storage by 2x okay why because it has to store t data and t minus 1 data in its store or as a persisted uh, or as persisted entities okay so uh, the data uh, the data size will uh, will be grown to 2x temporarily while t data is being built and once t is built okay t minus 1 will be vanished t minus 1 will, will be discarded or will be restored from the from the cache or from the underlying storage so again the memory uh, or, or again the disk storage will be uh, will significantly come down to what the t data requires for okay so this uh, this is the mechanism how we use the ignite now data retrieval challenges from sql so now data is stored it's time to retrieve data back from the ignite so when the ignite has more than 100k or more than 500k rows stored and we make a few simultaneous requests we experience from the previous data points that it puts data under tremendous load especially when ignite has 100k plus rows okay and it involves the transactional cost of transferring data from off heap to off heap to on heap memory uh, because ignite keeps all data in off heap memory so it has to transfer data this it has to transfer all this data from off heap to on heap memory and that's a, and those two are separate memory regions so there is definitely a transactional cost involved then uh, there can be a momentary memory spikes okay and we indeed have experienced this uh, based on uh, based on the matrix we gathered which uh, raises the risk of the application crashing so let's say ignite has stored 500 case of rows okay 500 case uh, or of uh, 500 500 k rows or 100 k rows only then when we ask when we make query to the ignite it gets all of the rows onto the off heap memory it transfer all the rows from off heap to on heap memory and on heap memory uh, suddenly experiences a memory spike because it has to accommodate all 100 k rows and this is only happening for one request okay but think it like this if we have got five or ten requests simultaneously from different clients then it may have to assign more number of records or let's say one million of records onto on heap memory okay so that will significantly increase the memory footprint and sometimes we have also uh, also seen that application was crashed because of this and uh, we need to quickly restart our application server because there was a memory crunch happened okay so that was the uh, biggest challenge and sometimes we also experience the timeouts when ignite has to retrieve the large records okay because if because we can't actually use in case of the memory crunch the ignite uh, ignites uh, the default nature of uh, getting the data queried on multiple threads because the cpu is uh, is not available highly on memory because of the memory crunch we can't actually allocate more and more number of threads so it has to retrieve the whole data set on a single thread and uh, it gets timed out okay so these were the challenges we observed what optimizations we did so these are the data retrieval optimizations we did so we calculated the estimated memory required to store each record on heap okay suppose ignite has stored 100 case of rows into ignite and then uh, we calculated that how much how much memory does one row would require to store in on heap memory okay then it would if it takes 10 kb of data it, uh, if it takes 10 kb of data then it's fine so we don't actually uh, get whole data set at once but we actually uh, get to retrieve them in partition i mean we get to retrieve them in uh, in the in the pagination based so that's what my next point is like we process the data in chunks rather than retrieve the entire data set okay so that is that is a crucial piece like we are not getting all the data at once but we are getting it in batch uh, we are retrieving it in a batch of 10k so if we have 100k of data stored uh, we have to reach ignite 10 times to get 100k of data if we are if we have a batch size of 10k okay then we have limit the number of inbound request coming into the application so like uh, if we have inbound request uh, I mean, if we have more than the configured number of limits, then we put them into the queue so that we can entertain it later. And uh, we ensure that no more memory spikes are observed for the oncoming or from the ongoing request uh, requests that are 
there to gather it out of the ignite fine a well implemented paginated approach that ensures ordering of the data then we collected the various memory metrics such as query execution time for each chunk ignite of if storage use size etc we tune the of if memory to hold more data that is accessed frequently in memory so as i mentioned earlier in the previous slide that if a particular cache or particular data is accessed frequently then we can tune the of if memory that is a separate memory region to a slightly higher memory so that it can accommodate more number of data so that it doesn't have to go to on this each and every time that can save us from the i operation okay then it can sort the keys to maintain the order and avoid duplication of the data retrieval from the sql okay so sorting of the keys is necessary for a paginated approach fine uh, this is called uh, the performance optimization and uh, the visual representation of this like uh, we have an application that gets the request from the client. We have the Ignite where the data is stored. So we make the queries in a synchronous fashion, like we make the query T1 and timestamp T1. Then once that query is responded by the Ignite, we make another query Q2 at timestamp T2. And after getting the response back from the Ignite for that query, we are making the next query. Okay, so this is, I have not actually depicted here the multi-threaded nature or I have not actually mention the uh, leverage thread pools which ignite provides but this is uh, this is uh, well explained like this is how we get the data out of the ignite for a particular data set okay so example query looks like this uh, we select on multiple columns required number of columns from the primary table we make joins to multiple tables then offset for uh, offset is nothing but a page number uh, uh, I mean, I mean the row number and then limit limit is the page size. Okay, and then order by ID. So ordering is important so that uh, we don't get any duplicate data out of the Ignite. So this is how we optimize the performance based on uh, the paginated approach. Okay, now it's time to talk about the feature roadmap. This is how we think we should take the Ignite from the current implementation in the future down the line in our application implementation. Okay. So currently Ignite is running as an application process, but we will run it as a standalone process. Okay, so that we can form a proper Ignite, appropriate Ignite cluster and we can accommodate more and more number of nodes if our data set is uh, increasing so that, uh, okay, we can form a well-defined cluster there with uh, by default number of, uh, by default number of nodes and then we can tune it based on our needs. Okay. It has the capability to scale on its own in a clustered environment. Then we can actually leverage the Ignite's nature of parallelize the queries to extend data faster from SQL storage. So uh, it has the various thread pools. So let's say if we have five gigs of data stored in node one, five gigs in node two, and five gigs in node three. Okay. Or if we have to retrieve, let's say, uh, 30K of records in a batch. So 10K of records will be retired from node 1 10k from node 2 and 10k from node 3 okay so clients here will be query the data on various thread pools to each and to each individual node it will then aggregate the results and stream it back to the client whoever asks the data okay so it may significantly improve the performance probably it will uh, the performance improvement uh, will be in a proportional to the number of nodes okay because if we have only single node and if it takes, let's say 10 milliseconds, but if we have three nodes, then it will only take three to four milliseconds to retrieve the same data set, right? We can increase the number of public and query thread pools to further minimize the latency. That is also quite obvious. We can increase the batch size to manage the IO operation seamlessly. Okay, when I say batch size, it means 10K or 20K of records in a single batch, in a single page, okay? So we can improve based on our number of nodes. So that will be called a batch factor for our uh, uh, Ignite cluster. And how much nodes are we running on a cluster will be defined on a data set we are receiving from the upstream servers and from the backend application that has the in-memory cache. And we can configure this number of things like thread pools, public thread pools, query thread pools, batch size and all the things. So this is how our future architecture will look like or future uh, the Ignite cluster will look like. So that's all I had to present for today. Now I am ready to answer any of your questions. Yeah, just kind of uh, 
interesting kind of bringing through all kind of different uh, decisions and to like to get something that kind of works kind of well at the end so that's kind of great to great to hear um we haven't got many questions in the chat uh so far um we've got one from uh swapnil um how do you collocate aggregated data do you use any special techniques as your ignite is secondary cache rather than a single source of truth uh so we have actually the data processors which uh does the all i mean which does all the necessary uh tasks like whenever we get the data from the backend application and that eventually uh uh i mean and the backend application receives data from the upstream source server so we actually as and when the secondary application gets data and that needs to be stored in the ignite so we have defined certain constraints before uh before we aggregate the data into the ignite but are not necessary because we are still running inside one application process we haven't actually taken out ignite of our application process so we don't need to aggregate much uh we only need to store data after doing uh certain data massaging uh, by means of the data processor and get get it to store into the ignite so that's what we do uh we actually get the data from i mean as of now we only get data from one uh from one source server but uh I mean, in future, it may be pointing to different different other source servers. Great, thank you. Um, so, a, a question um, that um, I'm, partly I'm asking because this is kind of what I asked you. I think when we kind of did the, the run through earlier on, but um, someone else brought this up. So, um, why do you run Ignite uh, not as a cluster but as a embedded inside your application? uh so okay so actually we uh we had thought of uh making it uh, i mean we had thought of implementing the ignite or putting ignite as a cluster uh, in a clustered environment but we wanted to experience the ignite apis we haven't uh never used ignite in any of our previous projects. so we wanted to gain some confidence with our modded data set in fact it works well with our huge data set as well uh, but now everything works well so that's why i have uh put that last side that our future roadmap will look like uh I mean, our new implementation will uh, will be the ignite out of our application, and that will be in a clustered environment. So that's what. But uh, I mean, it will always be ideal to run ignite in a clustered environment to uh, leverage the distributed nature of ignite and to run on multiple threads to get significant uh, improvement in the application. But it is nevertheless a common pattern. There's nothing nothing wrong with it. So it's kind of interesting to hear you, you've experienced kind of both. So that's kind of good. Yeah. Um, Sarinda asks kind of multiple questions uh, here. So, um, question number one: um, Was there a reason for not using the result result set page size instead of splitting the request into multiple requests you know, and different queries you know, to, do, to do the paginated query? Okay. Uh, was there a reason for not using resources page size instead of splitting request into multiple requests or some resource same chances in? Uh, okay, so uh, basically uh, we have tried to use the inbuilt API of the Ignite, but that what not, uh, I mean, that's what not we needed because we wanted to uh, do some customization. We also wanted to ensure the ordering of the data and uh, so that we have built the optimized, we have built actually customized query and that was optimized uh, in iterations that, that were optimized in iteration after we calculated certain metrics from the Ignite metrics API. And then we actually leveraged the Ignite thread pools to query the ordered data set from the Ignite to get the data in chunks. So that's why we have not uh, used the result sets as a page size, but we have requested, uh, I mean, we have actually, uh, we have actually uh, split uh, split the queries into multiple queries in a synchronous fashion because we currently have only one node running inside the application. So that's why, so that's the answer for question one. And two is like, uh, do yeah, the, second, the second question is, did you observe performance degradation in distributed SQL joins? Okay, so uh, to be honest with you that we haven't yet experienced the distributed SQL joins because we are not running Ignite in a clustered environment, but I can tell you from our experience of making the query or uh, or getting the data on multiple on on different threads to the ignite. So that is, uh, I mean, uh, there are some obvious reasons why we haven't uh, observed the performance degradation because whenever we query the ignite, whenever we ask the data from the ignite, it 
has to data it has to fetch the data on a separate thread and that thread works in an isolated fashion so that doesn't actually conflict conflict with other data set the only thing we need to ensure is the ordering of the data and we don't get any duplicates out of that so no we haven't observed any performance degradation in that so yeah but uh, the real distributor or uh, distributed nature of ignite we haven't yet experienced so uh, i can't uh, i can't comment on that but i am i'm quite sure that it will uh it will it will uh it will be significantly significantly higher performance because we have more number of nodes running and it will have different cpus and memory allocated to each and every node exactly so i mean it uh, ignite distributes the query across the cluster so actually you should still get yeah. good performance if if uh surinder you're coming across performance problems on this i'd suggest you kind of tune in for the next um ignite essentials training we talk about uh co-located joins um in that training course so i'd kind of suggest you kind of join for that um and last question from Serena: how do you recover uh, data on a disk failure uh okay so again like uh uh this is a quite debatable topic like how we can recover data uh when our disk is crashed or or the disk failure so uh, this is something we haven't yet experienced but uh, but we have been doing uh, doing some configuration changes in Ignite, and every time we do this, uh, we do a kind of brute forcing or the naive approach is we reload the data from the, I mean, as and when we get the data from upstream servers, we reload the cache instead of uh, recovering the data back from the disk. But probably uh, the Gridicant community will help us better that how we should recover data in a bit, uh, in a more efficient manner. So I'll be looking forward to that answer from the Gridicant community. Great. Um, so that's the last question I have Oops, wrong button. <laughs> with me uh, there. Um, so uh, really appreciate your, your time and your enthusiasm today. Um, any final words? Oh, sorry, uh, I missed that. I missed that part. What are you saying? I was just saying I appreciate your kind of time and energy today. Uh, any kind of final words? Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks, Stefan. And uh, hello, everyone who is there in the presentation. So uh, it was, I mean, I must say that it was a nice experience working with the Ignite APIs. Uh, this was the first ever experience uh, working with the distributed cache in, uh, in, uh, in my project personally. So I think uh, uh, we learned a lot. We uh, learned few, I mean, we actually observed few challenges and we learned the techniques to mitigate them. So probably we, it would help us to better navigate or, yeah, or, or it would help us to better uh, uh, design our future roadmap and better come up with the newer, uh, newer approaches instead of storing all the data in SQL and we can really make use of the key value pairs for certain caches which are, uh, which are most frequently used. So we are still exploring the APIs of the Ignite, but uh, the SQL engine, I think we have uh, we have implemented in a most efficient fashion as uh, as most as we can uh, as we could, but I think uh, there is still a long way to go working with the Ignite. Great. Well, uh, so thank you very much. Um, please hang around for the uh, remaining talks. Um, otherwise, kind of look forward to seeing you around in the community, and hope you're wishing you continued success. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Stephen.